the gentle giant of pop. Abby's happiness to Happy. Later in his life, some branded him a recluse, a brilliant yet eccentric musician. Here comes the sun. But to her, the Here real George Harrison wasn't an enigma at all. She was his constant companion, his biggest fan. She was his wife. He was a person that I had a great connection with, and he also had a great sense of humor, and he was uh, very serious, and he aspired to a higher kind of consciousness, a higher life. George was about to embark on his very own U.S. tour. That's when he met a 26-year-old named Olivia Arias in Los Angeles. Her grandparents had immigrated from Mexico. Her mother was a seamstress, her father a dry cleaner. As I read about you, I thought a lot about fate and destiny and how you were a nice girl in California working as a secretary in a record company. And all of a sudden, you're here. And I'm sure on several occasions, Olivia, you might have thought, wow. How did this happen? Wow, didn't he get lucky? That's <laughs> yeah. what I thought. Is it? Good for you. Yeah. Four years after they met, their first and only child, Danny, was born. It was December 1999, around 3 in the morning. While they slept, a 33-year-old schizophrenic broke into Friar Park and viciously attacked them both, stabbing George in the chest as many as eight times. You might not want to admit it, but you were pretty feisty. Yeah. In a desperate attempt to subdue the assailant, Olivia struck the man, first with a fireplace poker, then an antique lamp. You took that lamp and you walloped oh, yeah. him over well, the head with it. Yeah, George was coaching me, I have to say. And George was very brave, and people don't know that because he had already been injured, and he had to jump up and bring him down to stop him from attacking me. You know, he saved my life, too. You saved each other's yeah, lives. Yeah, we did. And that was so that was an interesting experience because, you know, um, not a lot of people get, get tested like that, thank God. I woke up. I just heard smashing of glass. I jumped up. I woke up George. It was about, must have been about 4.30 in the morning. And I said, somebody's smashed a window. And he said, how do you know? I said, I heard it. So he jumped up. And I ran to the door and I locked the door. And he said, why are you locking the door? I said, why? Because I'm afraid. That's why I'm locking the door. He said, no, no, no. I'm going out there. And so he ran downstairs, um, which he really didn't have to do, but he felt he had to do because my mother was upstairs. And uh, he didn't want, you know, he didn't know where how she was OK. We had a statue of St. Michael. and. The wing from the statue of St. Michael was made of stone, had been thrown through the window. And George was on one side and I was on the other. And we looked down and this maniac just ran in like a, like a Beelzebub with a stick from St. Michael in one hand. You know, uh, the, the, you know he, he slays the dragon with, uh, with his spear. He had that in one hand. And, I didn't see what he had in the other, but anyway, George started chanting really loud at him, and this guy was was saying, you know, get down here, get down here, um, you know, what do you want? He said, you know what I want. It was just horrible. It was just like this voice from the bowels of hell, and uh, and then he just ran up the tore up the stairs. He was in a florid, psychotic state, and he was tall and young. And they'd come closer to where the room was, and this man was on top of George, um, uh, 
trying to kill him, just laying on him in just, I think, th the worst way um, to have some, you know, physical contact with some horrible person. Anyway, I just ran back in the room and, uh, I don't know, something just took over and I grabbed a um, poker. My dad was a big baseball fan and he used to always say, follow through. That's all I could think of was, you're not, don't throw like a girl. Follow through. I mean, it got worse. It just got worse because I hit the guy several times, you know, I could see the blood spreading down his blonde hair and then he got up. You know, he got up and he chased me and had me around the neck and then George got up and jumped on his back. And poor George, he said, you know, God, just when he got off of me, I was thinking, you oh, know, good. Then I had to get up and fight him again. And he'd already been stabbed. Uh, but we all fell into a big pile and I managed to get out from underneath and George pinned him down and George said to me, I've got the knife. And I thought, what knife? You know, I didn't know. I, I thought he was just kidding. I thought he was just trying to fake the guy out saying, I've got, I've got the knife. It's like, I, I hadn't seen that. Afterwards, we were, we were um, taken to a good old National Health Hospital with the, <laughs> with these rickety wheelchairs at four in the morning and it was like freezing it was so cold I was just shaking I didn't realize I was in shock but you know they were pushing us down and we were looking at each other and we got us in these in these beds and they put the curtain around us and he had a collapsed lung he had things in and out the other side in and outside of his leg um, you know I had my head open and you know um, but just looking into each other's eyes, just our eyes must have been like, I said, what the hell was that? You practice loving God by loving another human and by giving unconditional love. Uh, sometimes people say, you know, what was the, uh, what's the secret of a long marriage? It's like, you don't get divorced. <laughs> And, and I think, you know, you go through challenges in your marriage, and I, here's what I found. First time we had a big hiccup in the road, I, 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 you know, you go through things, you go, wow, there's a reward at the other end of it. There's this incredible reward. You love each other more. You learn something. You let go of something. You get, you get those hard edges get softened. You know, you, you're that block of stone and, you know, life shapes you and takes away those hard edges.